I'm going to tell you a little bit. Genesis 1.27 said this. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, him, male and female created he, them. Stop there. The writer of Genesis was intentional to, 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 to play upon this idea of the image of God when he gave an account of how he created man. He said God created man in his own image. So we have to ask ourselves, what is the image of God? And then he says, in the image of God created he them, male and female created he them. That means that God created only two genders. Only two. If you believe that, say it with me, only two. Only two. So, note this. When we talk about the image of God, God is neither male nor female. Although he is mostly represented as a father in scripture, there are references to the Bible, such as when we see the name El Shaddai, that actually carries both masculine strength and nurturing feminine characteristics. So in his creative expression, God created male and female, the two genders, to represent his full image in the earth. Because God carries within him both characteristics, he then created both in male and female so that male and female can represent him. How many of you know that your value is based on this one thing? It's not how much you make. It's not what family you came from. It's not your education. It's not your pedigree at all. It is based on this one thing. You are the image of God. That's what you are. And then when the rest of creation looks at you, they see the image of God because whether you know it, feel it, or understand it, you were created to be an imager, an imager, a reflection of the creator God. That is what you are. How many of you believe that this morning? That is where your value lies. That's why you don't kill the baby. That is the image of God inside of you that is being formed. Now watch this. When God created the male, when he created Adam, Adam with the common A means humankind. It wasn't his name yet. It was what he represented. Adam means humankind. Humankind and the father of all humanity. And in Adam, God placed both the qualities of male and female because before Eve came along, there was Adam, and God put everything in Adam, the masculine and the feminine, the nurturing and the strength. He put all of that in Adam, and then God decided after a while, we don't know how long, but Adam was moving about, doing his thing for a while, and then God decided, he said, it's not good, as you read in your Bible, it says, it's not good for the man to be alone. It reads more closely in the Hebrew, it is not good for humankind to be solitary. Or, it is not good for humankind to live in solitude. And so what does he do? He literally splits the Adam, hallelujah, and he created from the other side of him, female, the female, who he named Eve, who is the mother of every living being. Get this. He, the Bible tells us that God from the rib of the man, or from the side, so we assume that he means a rib, took a rib and from it he formed, didn't create because man was already created. What he did was he took from what was created and then formed the woman. Watch this. But in truth, the Hebrew word that we translate rib is selah, T-S-E-L-A, selah, and selah means side or half. So literally what God did was he split the Adam in half. So when we make the joke, that's my better half over there, we're referring to our spouse, we really mean that. Now whether it's the better half or the worse half is not the issue, the point is that's your half over there. That is the biblical account of creation. 
That is what the Bible tells us about how God did it. Because he said it wasn't good for one human to carry around both male and female within himself. So he split them and then he puts in Eve, the woman, the qualities of femininity, the tenderness, the sweetness, the softness, the nurturing, the caring aspect. He invested that into her and left the Adam with the masculine qualities. So now, both male and female together represent the image of God. If God thought, and hear me well, if God thought that two men would be just as good, he would not have bothered to make an Eve. It would have been a Steve, but it would not have been an Eve. But here, listen to this. If you look in the Hebrew, the word for man is ish, I-S-H, ish. And the word for woman is isha, isha. And in the Hebrew, watch this, there is one letter in ish that is not in isha, and there's one letter in isha that is not in ish. <laughs> but when you put them together, it spells Yahweh. Literally, it spells God. Coincidence? I think not. I think it's intentional because it takes the man in his masculinity, the female in her femininity together to represent the fullness of what God is. Because remember I said God had in himself all of that and he decided to invest that into humanity. So when Ish looks at Isha, Ish wants to get with Isha, you know why? The natural attractions say, they say you may speak to a deeper desire for what was split apart to come back together again. And so the natural attraction before the fall, before sin, before Satan introduced his lie was that Ish and Isha were naturally drawn by an inexplicable magnetism to be together. And interestingly, when they came together, they represented the full image of God. And here's the, the best expression. How many of you know that you can't be God if you don't create? You can't have all that power and not express that power. So God expresses his power by creating. And so when the Ish and Ishal gets together, says God, they create another human being. That also is the image of God.